Hey guys, I'm gonna make a small tutorial on how I got uh, this problem fixed. Here we see an animation that was made for the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin. Um, obviously I'm using the Unreal Engine 4 female mannequin that has a different... It, it has the same skeleton but the bones have a different uh, scale and that means that it changes the end location of some bones after you apply rotation to it so the animation gets um, gets to the, to, to the wrong position basically so here we can see how the left hand that should end in the pommel of the sword actually ends um, in the wrong place so you may ask, okay, but why don't you just rotate the socket so it uh, ends where it should be, right? So this is the male um, mannequin, and here is the socket. If I play the animation on this male character, uh, let's look for, actually, let's look, it's the same animation, I haven't done anything to it. We see here's the animation, and even though if I move it, if I move this socket and it, it ends where it should be, when I try to use a different mesh, in this case the female, this happens. The hand always ends up in a different place. So there is no way that I could correct this animation for both meshes because they just have a different size. So it will require either that I create a special socket for each character or that I import two different skeletons and I use the same socket name but on a different skeleton um, those are the two um, things that occurred to me so the first thing I did was I set up virtual bones um, instead of the, the normal IK ones uh, I, I like how easy it is to uh, add the virtual bones to a skeleton inside the engine and it's more compatible in case some characters don't have this specific IK bones. So after adding the IK bones and tweaking with the rotation of the weapon socket, um, which is where the item gets spawned, after doing that, I went into the sword itself and I set up a socket on the sword, which I called IK hand L and this is basically where the wrist will snap to which is the hand L bone this is the target for the control rig so the good thing about this is that I can tweak the the size of this the, the, the location of this I already got it set up to some numbers but I think it looks okay um, after doing this with the sockets I went into the blueprint code. This is the normal third person clo code. Basically, I created two events. The, the key press for the one, all it's doing is checking if a sword is equipped, and if it's not, it's spawning the blueprint of that sword, which is getting the transform of the mesh at the socket. This is where I'm spawning the sword and um, I'm saving a reference to it and I'm attaching the um, actor to the component in this case the actor is the sword and I'm attaching it to the mesh which is the character on the weapon R socket everything snapped to target and then I'm setting this variable to equipped which lets me destroy the sword when I press the button again so this is what happens when I press the one key that's the code I just mentioned um, now, for the second press key, is exactly the same. I'm using a boolean to destroy the actor. Uh, I'm spawning the same blueprint class, the same mesh, the same transform, the same socket, uh, attaching it to the same socket, the same mesh. Everything is identical. The only difference is the naming of the boolean variables is different because I'm using this one on the animation blueprint to activate the control rig. So on the control on the anding graph, 
I have, this is the default ending graph, all I have is an extra control rig that I created that deals with the hand IK and it takes two inputs whether it should do the IK trace or not well, it it's not really a trace whether it should activate the IK in this case and the target which is a transform to where the hand should move to if we look at the event graph everything here is default I'm checking on my character blueprint if I have a long sword equipped if I don't I disable the control rig basically but if I do have a long sword equipped from the character I get the reference to the long sword that is created I get the static mesh of this long sword and from the static mesh I get the socket transform which is the AK hand L basically this is me getting this transform for this hand um, I'm saving that transform I'm activating the control rig and I'm just printing to the viewport the location in red of where that transform is so when I press 2 that red that's the target that I'm setting for the control rig now obviously this boolean right here should use left hand IK it's what's actually on the ending graph triggering the control rig so inside the control rig we use the same thing to use a branch if it's only execute if it's, this is true what I'm doing is I'm getting the target that I'm feeding into the control rig so this left hand target I'm getting it I'm calling this function to transform the this transformation from workspace to rig space uh, I'm only taking the translation of the target I'm creating a new transform um, and I'm getting the virtual void IK Hanel transform but I'm only taking the rotation and the scale so I feed in the rotation of my animation which is basically what this is this is the rotation of my animation and I'm taking the position of my target into this transform which I'm then feeding into this modify transform function I'm modifying the virtual bone for my left hand IK I'm feeding the transform um, the only thing is right here I'm using overwrite global instead of additive because I want to replace basically I want to replace the, the position not add to it um, um, I'm getting that same transform that I just modified I'm getting it again and I'm feeding that into a full body IK where the root is the pelvis and I only have one effector which is the left hand and I'm feeding the full transformation to it everything else is default that's that's it that's the whole control rig so um, we can see the original animation how the hand is not in the correct position so instead of me baking this animation into a control rig and manually editing or sending this animation to Maya or Blender or any other program just to fix this for this particular mesh which would mean a lot of work if you have a lot of animations instead of doing that uh, I'm using this control rig system which makes it easy for me to just automatically snap it Um, just like um, here on this static mesh right we can tweak the values in real time so instead of minus 5 I wanted to 8 or 5 you know well, let me get close this happens because um, the control rig is trying to uh, to move the hand at all times so I haven't set up I all the all, only thing I set up is this idle I haven't set the locomotion so that's why it's trying to mix the normal running locomotion with the sword being attached and it does this um, all I need to do is disable the control rig but once I set up the normal locomotion I won't even have to disable it for movement in fact I may need it um, because it, it's gonna take the the data from the locomotion data to actually place the hand in the right location on the sword um, if there is an event where I don't want the control rig to snap the, 
the left hand into the the left hand into the into the sword um, I can do it through an animation notify I can do an animation notify and exactly know where I want the boolean variable so this boolean variable that I have right here hold on this boolean variable could actually be modified instead of being on tick here every time the weapon is equipped I can actually do it on uh, an animation notify and basically when the animation starts I can just set the boolean to true and inside the animation if I have some animation where I don't want it to snap like a reloading animation or a taunt or whatever I can just disable this boolean and it will disable the control rig preventing this from happening right now I can get this socket and I can tweak the values of this so if for example the Y's if I want to make this go a little bit down or a little bit up um, I can tweak the values here so just need to find the right one I can tweak the values to for example increase where the hand is um, I can play around with this to basically change the position of it. It's not going to change the rotation because I'm not taking the rotation from, but this could be further ex uh, uh, extended so that the actual rotation of the socket affects the rotation of the hand as well. But this is basically the way that I came up with this. So I can modify or I can have the control rig modify the position of the left hand which it's a lot easier if you end up with a lot of animations and you want to use different meshes um, as long as they share the same skeleton hierarchy and there's difference in this, the bone difference is not that great you can actually reuse the same animation without retargeting them just set up this control rig and it will work so I wanted to showcase this because I spent like a week or two working on this scene if there was a way of me to fix in this problem without having to go into a 3D software program and just edit in the animation data itself. So I hope this tutorial actually helps you um, if you want to set this up or you want to extend it somehow maybe this will lead to somebody else doing something better than what I just did but anyway I hope it's useful for you and thank you for watching.